Greetings, dear friends. I present your attention to the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that are found on the Skoda Superb 2. It makes no sense to count on double galvanizing and different triple Z in the body number if the paintwork is violated. It collapses quickly enough. But the cars are generally painted well, only an experienced look will notice on a car more than 5 years old traces of corrosion on the lower edge of the doors in the places where lockers and bumpers contact the body. There are more problems on cars whose attachments were often removed. The gaps are very small, and a minimal violation leads to increased contact, contact and damage to the paintwork, and bumpers have to be removed on cars that haven't been involved in the accident. For example, in the rear bumper houses many parking sensors, the front one is removed for maintenance. It is paradoxical but true, cars after an accident with painting of parts of corrosion in these places usually do not have the paintwork layer after repair, if we are talking about high quality work, is usually thicker and doesn't wipe off so quickly. The rear fenders are at particular risk. They are long and the rear bumper is very long and heavy. The tricky twin door tailgate creates a special layer of problems. Its wiry harness, lock and door closer with sensors periodically create difficulties for owners. Incomplete closure, a constantly burning light in the tank, trunk and simply a failure of a lock are quite common. The piece of a correct decision is quite high and therefore collective farming is flourishing here. Instead of failed micro switches in the lock and door closer, separate ones are installed with interference in the wiring. The wiring itself is often already repositioned many times. The harness between the door and the body is frayed sometimes already in the third year of the car's life. However, this rarely leads to fatal failures. Usually all problems are limited to incomplete closing of the lid. The platform on which the pair is made is not simple in terms of electronics. Wiring with CIN bus many electronic units and with a very low quality of manufacture of harness. Even on relatively fresh cars, there can be problems with door wiring. If the driver's door harness fails, not only the power windows but also the side airbags will stop working. And if the wiring harness is broken under the dashboard, the power supply to the ECU may disappear with a complete failure of the machine. In general, the power supply circuit of the blocks is quite complex. Several power buses do not depend on each other and if the pleased ones fails, there will be no startup. In this case, the problem may be hidden at a point that at first glance is beyond suspicion, say in a fixed part under a panel or near a switching unit. Communication failures on the CN bus also occur again to the wire of the blocks. In general, there are chances for a serious breakdown of the system and in case of problems, you will need a very good electrician who can read circuits perfectly and understand what he does. A small problem can turn out into a very expensive replacement of the wiring harness or a huge amount of collective farm. Avoid it later by all means. There are examples when, it not, when it's not possible to fully start the car after such an intervention for months. Painstaking work is required to check all systems. Failures of the multimedia system are common, especially a lot of complaints about Bolero, but the rest are also not without sin. Half of the problems, again, are caused by firmware and other interventions, but often everything ends up replacing the head assembly. Wiring the rear door and rear bumper is a separate problem, where difficulties arise especially often. Under the hood, the hassle of the wiring is less. Fairly reliable connectors and strong insulation deliver a minimum of problems. However, the engine sensors are at risk. There is a separate intake air temperature sensor and the place was chosen very well. It is constantly clogged with oil from the ventilation system and shows no one knows what. The oil pressure sensor fails very often, the coolant temperature sensors are lying. The throttle valve usually fails at over 100 mileage, just towards the end of the warranty. In general, the electrician needs to be checked carefully and the likelihood of failure is about average, not least due to the quality of the wiring. The braking system of the machines is reliable and expensive. If you do not torment the ABS control unit with left firmware, then there is only one problem – excessive release on irregularities and in, cor and in corners on, on firmware up to 2013 inclusive. The brake mechanics are reliable, the tubes are not rotting yet, the ABS sensors are in good places. Cool housing with the installation of more powerful discs and brake calipers is in comfort. In itself, this is not scary, usually the components are from the constructor, a set of components of the PQ35 platform and everything works fine. But such tuning as a rule means that the engine was also chipped, and the chips are different. By the way, if something rings or stretches in the suspension, they pay attention to the attachments of the dust shield. Very often they break at the attachment points. The electric power steering is almost exemplary here. It's both well-tuned and reliable. The main problems arise what is surprised with the wiring harness. Watch the contacts do not allow oxidation and damage to the connectors. The travel of the tire roads and tips depends mainly on the driving style and the width of the tires, but usually up to 80,000 km is not a concern. The pendants are also mostly pleasing. The McPherson strut in the front in the case of 
of the suspension with the bed road package BPD perfectly withstands our directions, except that the strut supports are rather weak. On cars with the steel front subframe, mainly until 2009, the rear bushings and the, of the front levers may please early with squeaks, but the part itself inexpensive. If the subframe is aluminum, then the silent locks are more reliable, but noticeably more expensive. The rear suspension is slightly reinforced and carries the weight well. The resource of most suspension assemblies is more than 50,000 km, except that the stabilizers run less, but this is a consumable. After 50-60,000 km, you can expect the subsidence of the front struts, the replacement of the rear arm supports and the revision of the rear suspension. If the shock absorbers and spring are from a PPD kit, then most likely they last even longer, and if the European ones are supplied but without additional anthers, then the shock absorbers will already be heavily set down. When installed in your suspension, many change the springs for leisure foreigns and the shock absorbers leave the old ones. The result is that the car becomes even lower and stiffer than even standard Euros for an amateur. When installing the rear silent block of the L-shaped lever from the Audi S3, the car starts to steer even more sharply, but the vibrations and noise in the cabin increase much, to a lever clearly exceeding the comfortable one. Actuators and mechanical gearboxes in general do not cause any special problems, with one caveat, if the operation is calm. Usually a turbo engine provokes a rather active driving style and even tuning opportunities. In this case, the rest zone is both a dual mass flywheel on the engines 1.8 and 2.0 and a manual transmission differential. If the flywheel knocks, it's time to get it prepared or replace it with a new one. A new one can be taken as a standard one or you can buy a more reliable clutch kit from a VR6 motor and a custom flywheel from Bruce, although its price seems a bit overpriced. The later option is needed mainly for those who have a motor undergoing serious tuning. It is possible to extend the life of the differential only by changing the oil in the box in time and listening to the box on the lift. When the wheels are rotated with hands on an unchecked car and the gear is engaged, there should be no jerks and sticks and if you start the engine and spin the wheels, the unit should not emit, emit extraneous noise. By the way, the technique is also great for DSG, DQ200 and DQ250. Their differential is also weak and a lot of gearbox wear products fall into it too. Front wheel drives with powerful 2.0 TSI and 3.6 FSI engines do not last long. Often they need to be changed by, by hundreds of thousands of kilometers. When tuned 1.8 and even 1.4, the effect is the same. And the anthers of the drives are not particularly durable. They need to be checked at every MLT. But under normal operation, the resource is consistently large. A similar part on the Passat often has a resource of more than 250-300 thousand kilometers. All-wheel drive transmissions do not stand out in terms of maintenance, except that the oil in the holdex coupling needs to be changed every 40-60 thousand kilometers, and the wiring of the coupling must be serviced sometimes, checking the seals of all connectors, especially after driving through the deep puddles. On heavily tuned versions, there are also problems with the rear gearbox and drives, but there are a few statistics. Besides, all-wheel drive was normally only available for cars with 3.6, of which there are very few and as an option it was ordered for 1.8 and 2.0 motors, and obviously not to go to church on Sundays. Could hardly have done without a good NLE. With automatic transmission everything is more complicated. Until 22, on the most popular versions with 1.8 engines, they put a very problematic the SJ7, a COM DQ200. It is rarely found on imported cars with a 1.4 engine, we didn't sell such an configuration. From 2010 to 2013, they installed an almost successful automatic transmission icing TF60SC, which can only be scolded for an unsuccessful cooling system, which is easily repaired. However, the low technical level of users, traffic jams and high-quality dealer service, only with original spare parts and even the absence of routing oil changes, killed this unit with a guarantee of 160-200 thousand kilometers. But on the other hand, when operating with short runs and without traffic jams, it lives happily after ever after. On powerful engines 2.0 and 3.6, a stronger DSG-6 with the wet clutch was also installed, a Kan DQ-250. Sometimes you can find even more powerful DQ-500 with 7 steps, but this is already tuning, it was not installed regularly. After installing in 2013 with 1.8 engines, they again began to put the DQ-200 in a slightly improved version. It is the DQ-200 that causes the most problems until 2010-2011. The first set of clutches on it usually had a resource of up to 40,000 km. The improved second one usually went longer, but not much. After 90-100,000 km, it also needs to be replaced, and at the same time repairs are needed for the dual mass flywheel. The price of the clutch kit is from 35,000 troubles, the flywheel is about the same, plus not cheap replacement work at all. 
but these are just cost. It is much worse that the box itself also fails. The differential breaks, the seats of the switching rods wear out. The solenoids of the valve body and its wiring become dirty and worn out. The sensors stick with sawdust. The design was initially unsuccessful. There are too many wear products in the all, which is the working fluid of the mechatronic valve body. And unlike conventional automatic transmissions, these are not the soft remnants of cardboard fringes, but metal. And wear products also began to magnetize to sensors and solenoids. In general, you can often change the oil, you can clean the mechatronics, but the box will not have a long and happy life for sure. The 6-speed DQ250 was essentially the same problems. Has essentially the same problems. Only the clutches here are also in the oil bath and there are no questions with the flywheel. Everything is much easier to change, the filters are a little better and are designed for a great moment. Problems are less common, but the overall results and the result is the same. The box, was inevitably, the box will inevitably fail, wear and tear will be very large and repairs will be expensive. And the old change here should already be tied not only to the mileage and the number of switches, but also to the number of sharp accelerations. Sometimes after 15-20 thousand kilometers of mileage in an active urban rhythm, the oil contains a large amount of wear products and it is better to change it. If you leave everything as it is, the car is operated in a city with traffic jams, then after 80 thousand kilometers you can count on switching switching due to contamination of the valve body. And if you do not change the linings of the gas turbine engine and do not change the oil, then after 100-100 rating 20,000 km you will have to do serious renovation. There are a lot of good things to say about super engines, but only a fraction of that can be written in a decent publication. All gasoline engines, except for the top end VR6 3.6, are supercharged here and all with direct injections. And all the units have enough problems. Small 1.4 TSI are more common on Octavia and Golf. 1.8 TSI and 2.0 TSI engines can be seen on Octavia and Passat. And VR6 in the configuration is found on the first generation Volkswagen Touareg. Of the undoubted advantages of all engines, high efficiency. And the turbocharged engines also have a good boost margin. Even a small 1.4 TSI potentially generates more than 180 forces, while 1.8 TSI and 2.0 TSI with minimal interference in the hardware give out for 300 forces. And the cons. The 1.4 engine is almost never found on Russian cars. It was officially supplied only in the first year of the model's release and only with the manual transmission, and it was not in demand. Difficulties, a small timing resource, sometimes up to 50,000 km, a weak turbine, a problematic liquid intercooler, poor engine warm-up, a small resource of liners, and what is more unpleasant, weak pistons, and an oil burner to boot. Something can be solved with a more viscous oil, something by frequent monitoring of problem points. But since most of the owners are not inclined in to speculation and are limited to standard maintenance, the chances of failure are above average. The most common troubles are chain slip, well bending, burnout, and piston cracks due to detonation. In addition, the failure of the injection pump and injectors. In general, there is something to watch out for. Engines 3.6 are rare, and piston engines are not ideal. It is a little prone to coking. The fuel equipment is sensitive to the quality of the fuel, and the timing belt is somewhat overcomplicated. Its resource is not stable, and with wear it is prone to slip. The most common engines are 1.8 and 2.0 generations EA888. And they also don't differ in super reliability, but the piston is strong here, the intake system is simpler than that of 1.4, and the safely margin of the connecting rod piston is noticeably higher. The main problems are cocking of the piston group on engines manufactured before 2014. The resource of the timing belt and phase shifters is about 100 130,000 km on average, plus control system failures. It seems to be okay, but if you look at it, unstable idle on the EA888 is not just a dirty, worn throttle or old plugs. Often this is a pressure valve in the fuel rail, and perhaps high-speed pump starts to be capricious at low speeds. Or the cam of its drive, but then the motor will not work even at high speeds. The price of a valve is from 5,000 rubles, the price of a ramp is from 20,000, a pump is from 12,000. If the engine is in oil, then the reason is either in the crankiest ventilation system, it is rather weak here, or in the oil separator, but more often the compression rings just lay down. Then the intake pipes begin to sweat. And if you skip this sign, then most likely the rear oil seal of the crankshaft will squeeze out and the plastic upper timing cover will flow. This is how the motor is designed successfully. If the piston group has already been changed, then it will not coke on low viscosity high quality as AE30 oil. Only the recommended oils are not very good for selection. It is better to switch to Easter or PAO oils. And if there is obvious waste, then in combination with decarbonization. 
And once again I remind you about the desirability of installing a colder thermostat, so as not to overheat the motor. On average, AE888 engines take care of the warranty mileage stably, but what will happen at the end depends on the quality of service and the perseverance of the owner. Many have not changed the pistons and believe that the consumption of 48 liters of oil from MOT to MOT is a normal result. They believe that the warranty engineers that the turbo engine should eat oil and the DSG gearbox should twitch. And after the warranty expires, they will be surprised to learn that these were the first signs of serious problems. On this information about the problems of Skoda Super 2 is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.